Hello everyone, I'm John and welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited because Dwarf Lab just announced the Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope. And in this video I want to show you a comparison between the old Dwarf 2 and the new Dwarf 3 Telescope. I will show you side by side the specifications and also what's new. Before we begin with the specification, I'm uh, happy to say that the color of the Dorsey telescope it's not black or dark grey as I thought it would be in the promo video. It's actually a silver color, I believe it's called Moonlight Silver. You can see it here in this product image that the Dwarf Lab sent me. We have here the technical specifications side by side, Dwarf 2 and the Dwarf 3. Let's begin with aperture diameter 24 millimeters for the dwarf and the new dwarf 3 has 35 millimeters so we have an aperture upgrade with an extra 11 millimeters i was hoping for 2 inch or uh, 48 millimeters so we'll still be able to fit uh, 2 inch uh, filters uh, on top of the dwarf uh, lenses however 35 millimeters is still an improvement compared with uh, one inch uh, aperture that we had with the dwarf 2. having larger aperture it will allow us to capture more light in uh, the same time with the dwarf 3 and also have better resolution i believe dwarf lab didn't improve the aperture too much because it wanted to keep the size and weight similar with the dwarf 2. So the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope, it has about 1.2 kilograms and the new Dwarf 3, I understand it has 1.3 kilograms, so only 100 grams extra. Now let's continue with uh, focal length. The new Dwarf 3 has 150 millimeters focal length on the main lens compared with 100 millimeters. Being also longer, 150 millimeters combined with the aperture will give us a uh, focal ratio of about f.3 so we have a similar focal ratio compared with the dwarf 2 however the resolution is better and this translates in better image resolution and we will be able to get finer details in our astrophotography images equivalent focal length 675 millimeters on the dwarf 2 and 737 on the dwarf 3 here is the field of view that we have with the Dwarf 2 telescope. It's close, you can go here, select telescope, Dwarf 3 and the sensor. And you can see also other objects and simulate the field of view. We've talked about the increase in aperture and longer focal length of the Dwarf 3. However, let's not forget about the optical system. We have also an innovation here, Dwarf Lab added multiple plus elements to compose an apochromatic lens that should give us much better astrophotography images compared with the Dwarf 2 telescope. We'll have the possibility to use now also the wide field lens to do astrophotography like Milky Way astrophotography. And I'm not sure if we'll be able to do it also with the Dwarf 2. It might be possible because Dwarf 3 and Dwarf 2 will still be using the same Dwarf Lab app for astrophotography. The new Dwarf 3 will not use the old filters anymore. We will have different filters also for solar and deep sky. For solar imaging, we have a very interesting set of ND filters that are included in the adapter and they look like eyeglasses or goggles as you can see here in this image. We will not use anymore the old ND filters if we have the Dwarf 2 telescope and also we won't use the light pollution filter anymore. Dwarf 3 comes with an internal narrowband filter that has a bandwidth of 12 nanometers for H alpha and 20 nanometers for oxygen 3. This will also increase the sky contrast and allow us to obtain better nebula images. And uh, we'll still have available the IR cut option and IR pass. However, I've heard that they have also a new IR pass filter that will allow us also to get good focus while using the IR pass that was not possible with the older model. 
and this is another important upgrade for the Dwarf 3. Having an internal filter will also eliminate that problem that uh, we had with the old filters in some situations where uh, we had uh, outside lights. And it happened to me a few times also when imaging Orion Nebula, I had some uh, bad reflections in my astrophotography images. On sensor, the old Dwarf has the IMX 515 Starvis and the new Dwarf 3 telescope has the Sony IMX 678 Starvis 2, a larger and newer sensor that will be able to give us much better results on deep sky astrophotography. Regarding the new sensor, you'll be able to find also more information online if you search for IMX 678. We have here pixel size of 2 microns, much more sensitive sensor. This means will give us much better results for astrophotography. Also, having the ability to get longer exposures will uh, give us a huge quality improvement. You have seen now also the new sensor of the Dwarf 3 and I do want to mention here that the new sensor will not be limited like the old one at 15 seconds exposures. So we'll be able to capture longer exposures with the new Dwarf 3. I heard that Dwarf Lab improved also the motor of the new Dwarf 3. It should be able to track better and it will work also in altazimuth mode and equatorial mode. Now here on astronomy tools we have here this calculator that will calculate our image resolution by entering the focal length of our telescope and the sensor pixel size in uh, microns. The old dwarf had 100 millimeters focal length and pixel size of 1.45 microns. This will give us a resolution of 2.99 arc second per pixel. On the next page, here we have the focal length 150 millimeters and pixel size of 2 microns. So these are the specifications for the Dwarf 3. And you can see the number in resolution is smaller. This means is better. We have 2.75 arc second per pixel and we are getting really close with the resolution of the Sistar S50, that is 2.39. Digital resolution the same, motor and visible angle the same, battery, here we have on the door 3 a larger battery of 10,000 amps, much larger than the door 2 and it's also irreplaceable, so you won't have the possibility to swap batteries anymore. And it has external USB charging support. Power input type C, same mounting screw thread 1/4 inch. Connectivity, we still have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, however the working range differs. So on working range, the door 3, it will work up to 20 meters without problems and the Dwarf 2 usually will work up to 10 meters. The old Dwarf had a micro SD card of 64 gigabytes that we could upgrade with a larger card and the new Dwarf 3 has 128 gigabytes AMMC included. So I think we'll not be able to upgrade the card, it will be internal memory. Storage format, the same uh, JPEG RAW fits stiff. Operating temperature seems to be the same. Shooting modes, we have the same shooting modes as we have with the Dwarf 2. Field of view, 3 degrees for the Dwarf 2 and 3.38 degrees for the Dwarf 3. Digital resolution, the same, 8 megapixels. Application available, MPU, 2 tops on Dwarf 2 and 5 tops on the Dwarf 3. MPU meaning Neural Processing Unit that the Dwarf 3 will have a better processor that will work better with AI specific processing and tasks like object detection. And I believe it will work also better with live stacking. Streaming protocol the Dwarf 2 doesn't have any and the new Dwarf 3 has also RTSP that will allow us to also stream while imaging with the Dwarf 3 on YouTube, Facebook and other social media platforms. After seeing all the new upgrades for the Dwarf 3, like uh, larger aperture, longer focal length, better optics, 
a narrow band internal filter, new ND filters, larger battery and probably the most important, a larger and newer sensor. The new Dorf 3, I think it will uh, really make a huge step up compared with the old Dorf regarding image quality for deep sky astrophotography. To stay tuned, I will make also a review as soon as I will uh, be able to receive a unit, a beta unit from uh, Dorf Lab to test the new Dorf 3. And also I heard soon it will be available for pre-orders from 30 May and I will share uh, an affiliate link in the description that it will take you directly to the Dwarf Lab website. From where you will be able to also pre-order the Dwarf 2 and also you might get a discount if it will be available. This is all for today. I hope you find this information useful and I hope I didn't forget anything. And if you have any questions, please write them in the comments below. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. And why not also join the channel membership if you want to support the channel more. There you'll be able also to get access to my astrophotography data. I hope I'll see you also in the next videos and I wish you all clear sky.